What are some considerations when writing an argumentative essay? Hello and welcome to Pedagogical Dialogues, making teaching and learning more transparent. My name is Benjamin Stewart at BenjaminLStewart.net. In episode 126, we're going to talk about what to consider when writing an argumentative essay. And before we get into today's topic, feel free to reach out to me at my Twitter handle at BNLEEZ if you have any thoughts, experiences, opinions on today's topic. So today I want to talk about what to consider when writing an argumentative essay. Some of the things I talk about here today are going to be very specific to uh, an assignment that uh, that I use for my own students. If you are looking more broadly at writing argumentative essays, uh, some of the things we talk about here today will uh, be very specific to what you're doing and others will perhaps uh, will just give you some perspective when adapting your own over, overall organizational patterns and, and approaches to writing uh, such an essay. So when you're writing an argumentative essay, think of three different types of claims that should be written or included throughout the essay. The first being an initial claim, the second being a counterclaim, and the third being a rebuttal. Now, the initial claim is going to be the starting claim, the first argument or position or point of view that you want to introduce. A good argumentative essay relies on not only a strong initial claim, but also a very strong and sound counterclaim. The counterclaim is going to basically state what's weak or what's wrong with the initial claim. A rebuttal sets out to state what is weak or uh, what is weak or what's wrong with the counterclaim. That's the relationship between the initial claim, the counterclaim, and the rebuttal. As you're writing and developing your overall argument, the way in which you present these three claims will really be the difference between writing a good argumentative essay and one that is not that sound. So when you're developing a thesis statement, your thesis statement is your overall claim that applies to the overall argument over the, or the overall main idea of the essay. But as you get into each of the body paragraphs and you're writing a topic sentence that's going to represent the main idea of that one particular paragraph, then begin to think how you can introduce initial claims, counterclaims, and rebuttals throughout those body paragraphs. When you're including evidence, when you're writing an academic text, and you're including citations as evidence, think of each of those claims as addressing one of these three claims, the initial claim, the counterclaim, or the rebuttal. Which type of citation or evidence that you're including supports each of those? Also consider the question words, asking yourself which of the question words relates to the type of citation that you're including. Does your citation address what does it address how or why or when or where, perhaps with whom? As you are thinking to yourself and making decisions about how to organize these claims throughout each of the body paragraphs and also paragraph to paragraph, how you're introducing these, these claims throughout. Okay, so certain claims that are uh, addressed in the paragraph, these initial claims, counterclaims, and rebuttals end up being premises to an overall claim, which is represented there in your thesis statement. Now, when you're writing an argumentative essay, you can really think of the overall organizational pattern being basically broken down into two different methods, the block method and the point by point. Now, the block method is where you would introduce, let's say, in the first body paragraph, if we're thinking about a five paragraph essay, that first body paragraph might include only initial claims. The second body paragraph would only include counterclaims that relate to the initial claims that were presented in the prior body paragraph. And the third body paragraph would focus mainly on a rebuttal or have several claims that relate to a rebuttal that would link back and state what was weak or wrong with those claims that were presented in the second body paragraph. Now, for those of you who are taking class with me, I'm suggesting that we follow instead a point-by-point -point method. 
a point by point method basically focus on, focuses on topic sentences or main ideas that come from main ideas that are developed in the body paragraph. They come primarily from the key terms that are listed or key ideas that are listed in the thesis statement. So when you conclude your thesis statement, maybe you list out three ways something happens or three reasons. Those three key points then in the same order will be developed in greater detail in subsequent topic sentences. So each of the three body paragraphs will develop the key ideas that were listed and presented in the thesis statement. This is the point by point method. And this is the method that I would choose for developing an argumentative essay. Now, the last thing to consider when you're writing an essay, an argumentative essay, is to look very closely at your thesis statement and ask yourself, does the thesis statement address a problem only or does it address a problem and possible solution? The answer to that question will then dictate pretty much how you're going to be writing an essay. Are you writing a problem only essay or a problem and solution essay? Now, when you're writing a problem only essay, the main claim in your thesis statement, along with the supporting key points, whether you're expressing how something happens or why something happens, is only going to address a problem. So maybe you're addressing three reasons why this is a problem. Maybe you're explaining three different ways that this is a problem. But that should be very clear, should be very evident in the thesis statement. If you're writing a problem solution essay, then the thesis statement should reflect a possible solution. And as the main claim, that also includes, let's say, three reasons why this is a possible solution or three ways that this is a possible solution. Maybe you show th or describe three different ways that this could present or be a possible solution to the problem. So again, it should be self-evident in the thesis statement if you're writing a problem-only essay or a problem-solution essay. Now, for those of you who are taking class with me, I usually su suggest that we only choose a problem-solution essay um, because I think, generally speaking, it's going to be easier to find support or citations that support the three different types of claims that we're going to be needing to include in our argument of essay. That is, again, the initial claim, the counterclaim, and the rebuttal. Uh, if anyone wants to write a problem-only essay, then uh, perhaps we can discuss this just to make sure we're on the right track. And and uh, you are as long as you have support, you have citations to support your overall argument, then there's no reason why that'll be a problem. Uh, so do make sure when you're developing your skeleton outline that you have the citations that support these three different types of arguments, preferably before you begin the writing process, before you begin writing your first draft, so that you can go into the writing process without having to worry and stop and go back and read a lot uh, and find additional articles. Uh, it can get a little bit messy if uh, you're not sure that you have the support you need, the citations that you need before you begin the writing process. So to conclude, a good argumentative essay relies on your ability to introduce three different types of specific claims, initial claim, a counterclaim and rebuttal. For the purposes of writing a five paragraph essay, I don't see that it's necessary to include all three types of claims in each of the body paragraphs, but throughout your three body paragraphs, you will need to include at some point initial claims, counterclaims, and rebuttal. You will need to include an initial claim in each of the three body paragraphs, but you can decide when to best introduce counterclaims and rebuttals. Again, it's not necessary to include all three in, uh, or each of the three in all of uh, the body paragraphs. This has been Pedagogical Dialogues, making teaching and learning more transparent. Thanks for listening.